Hey guys, I got something special for you today in light of a failure from me. I had a great competitive commentary game coming up for you and then I deleted the footage like an absolute numbskull. I've never really done that before. I tried to get the footage back, it's unrecoverable and I was really sad about it. The game that I'm talking about was actually a really close, really fun game uh, with five stack of really great players, my friends. I wanted to find a way to actually show you this game but also make it interesting instead of just a normal boring post commentary. And the idea that I came up with is to watch this game back with someone else and this person is, in fact, Venno, who is literally the best player I know, and I would say that he's minimum supreme, probably global, in terms of rank. Basically, he knows his shit, and he's been someone who's been helping me get better at the game since I was around, like, Silver 5 or something. He's been a huge impact on my gameplay and my improvement, and a huge reason as to how I've got better at the game so quickly. And I wanted to find a way to share that knowledge that he has with you, the viewer. I think this is going to turn out really well, and I hope that this helps you guys. If it did, do leave a like, let me know what you thought, and if you'd like to see more of this on different games, different maps. I'd also like to thank my sponsor, CSGOSkinRaffles.com, a site where you can enter raffles. Basically, you can trade a key or a skin or item worth two and a half dollars for a ticket slash raffle ticket, and you can put it into one of these raffles. Quite simply, the reason to do this is because if you used a key to open a case, you would have significantly less chance than spending that key on one of these raffles. You have a 1 in 25 chance, a 1 in 20 chance, a 1 in 10 chance, a great chance to get a good skin using that key or a item that's worth two and a half dollars. When compared to using a key to open a case where you have a tiny, tiny chance to get something that isn't worth five cents. Overall, I think it's a great website and you should definitely check it out. My referral link is in the description if you want to. Enjoy the video, guys. Hey guys, uh, welcome to the replay. Benno is joining me to help explain how I am the worst player EU, um, but also how I'm the best player because I'll be here as well talking mad shit. Um, so we're on Mirage, we're playing a five stack, we're going against another five stack, and it was a really good game. It went really fucking well. Um, tons of crazy shit actually happens. There's some really, really fucking good moments. And because I'm an idiot, I may have already explained, I deleted the footage. But I still wanted to find a way to show the video, um, show this game. And I ended up uh, coming up with this good idea. So here we are. Hello, Venno. Um, Hello. We're about to watch as uh, Nuka gets absolutely railed here. And wow. there, there, there it no, is. No, not yet. There it is. <laughs> he did a okay. pretty good job. <laughs> he stayed alive longer yeah, than you did. Yeah, for quite a while. I, I just, got a kill I, though, so... I, I just want to point out, you're, you're a scrub for doing the footage. Yeah, I am um, a massive scrub. I don't think I've ever done that before. Like, <laughs> I'm, I think I've genuinely, I think I've done that once or twice throughout the five and a half years I've been doing YouTube. So, I was really upset. And apparently the footage was unrecoverable. Before anyone suggests that, we went through the process. We got, like, the fucking programs and went through the files. And it was just completely gone. It was unrecoverable. Right, well, let's actually talk about the game then. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe you should time. do that. So, I'm okay, pushing so on the pass right now. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say what happened in the first round. Yeah. Um, you bas there basically was a call. Go B. Yeah. What happened is, two people actually went B. And three of you guys stayed up in apartments, didn't do anything. Ah, yeah. Yeah, well, I remember that round. Oh, oh. oh See, I'm so good at the game. I'm on, I'm on one health. That's all I need. Yeah. Oh, God. So we knew there was a guy window then. I wanted to the nade him. And then Axon was like, no, I'm going to get a kill. That was a bad what nade. Joke. It was an attempted nade. It was uh, thrown. Okay. It was thrown at the ticket booth. And he was at the ticket booth. Therefore, it was a great nade. <laughs> Yeah, maybe yeah, I should have thrown it a little bit, a little bit further uh, to the right. No, basically, what happened in the first round is um, the terrorists have something called strength in numbers. The CTs will have to divide themselves over the bomb sides, and the terrorists use this to most of the time just push one bomb side. Yeah, the call yeah. was made to push B. What happened there is two people actually pushed B. Three of you guys stayed in apartments. So what happened is there's two people on site could get the kills easily without you guys in apartments actually touching them. Yeah. You stayed in apartments for too long, which made it possible for the guy in window to rotate already, which meant that you lost the round easily because you yeah, didn't yeah. even get the rounds. Uh, Simply when you when you're pushing a site with five people, you just gotta you gotta fucking just get in there because you are probably gonna be against two people. Um so you wanna do that. You wanna go five V two. You don't wanna have a fight and then let them rotate and then keep having a fight forever. It was a bit of a mess. It was just one of those moments. But I, I agree, yeah. We should have Oh, that's smoking connectors. Yeah, good. super good. Do you want to see how good it is? Oh, get wrecked. 
Dead. There's <laughs> <laughs> nothing you can do about it. Like, yeah. It, so I was playing with... Uh, who were we playing with? We were playing with Atsun, Yuka, Zinkan, and Gubiak. We're all on uh, mics. We're talking in-game. Um, rather than, uh, I don't know, team speak or whatever. I wanted to do it so people could actually see like what we're saying and who was speaking. Because there were some people talking and asking about that. Um... So I did try and do that. So in the next live five stack, we will actually be using in-game. So you guys are able to uh, decide who's talking and when when I'm speaking to them and stuff like that. Because it confused some people. I'm actually going to turn my in-game volume down a little bit so that uh, it doesn't overwhelm your voice or anything. There we go. I, I so Nuka's in this extreme 1v1 situation. Oh, he spots him. Oh, no bullets. Oh, how did you know? Oh, God, I remember that. <laughs> Running spray. Oh, God. Running. Spray. Oh, for, like we, we were all sat there watching, telling him like, "Oh, get you, get you got these nades, you got this." He's probably Ben Shokar, but not one of us looked at how much ammo he had in his fucking gun. <laughs> Somehow he lives. All right, so I pick up a scout, and I've actually started using scouts um, a bit more recently. I've had some like good success with them. It's it's getting used to the fact that you can just fucking run around with them, unlike you know the op. Um, and it's not been a gun that I've ever really picked up, but. I think I'm able to tag people. I just need to use it a bit more to get headshots. See that? I mean, I just tag him right off the bat, no problem. But it needs to be a headshot. So well, I'm to be trying fair, to learn that. Most of the time, tagging is enough for your teammates to actually get. Yeah, yeah. Go. I mean, you saw Nuka just took the kill, no problem, because he was so okay, hurt. Got another tag, and oh, missing. I hit him, but I mean, it's not going too well. The follow-up. <laughs> Ah, oh, God, that was so bad. <laughs> Gone with my team, held from a better position, it probably would have been fine. Because as soon as I hit that first shot, I should have just left the connector. I'd hit him once, that's enough at that point. Um, how much how much damage does a scout do to body when they've got armor? I don't actually know. I think it's around 80. Yeah, it's basically enough to say one bullet or two pistol shots is going to kill the guy, no matter where you shoot him. Um, he's hurt, basically. Or was it around 70? I don't know, because I, I never use the scout. I'm, yeah. I'm not a... An, an You're not an AWP guy either. And, yeah, and yeah. It's like that. I mean, I, I want to use it more because it's like a cheap, good eco-weapon. Man, I can smell him. That is so fucking bad. <laughs> well, what happened there is... I got shot from short. In, in Mirage, mid control can be something very important. Yeah. You see a guy jumping in the window, and you're like, oh, there's a guy yeah, in the window. Yeah, I'll just wait it out, get the headshot. I, I have to kill him. Yeah. Uh, and there was nobody mid covering your short, neither your connector. So it's basically very dangerous to just put yourself in that position if you don't have anyone. Yeah, yeah. I mean, back. that's the thing. We, we, we've we just started playing together. This five stack, I think this is probably the strongest five-man team I've got out of... I've basically been putting together like a five-man team of viewers and different people who are DMG, uh, <clears throat> uh, LE, LEM, etc. Um, I'm trying to put together a five-step that's like reliable, that we can win most of our games and honestly just have fun together as friends. Uh, and I've been trying out a lot of people. And in this stack, I can... You know, Atson's a pretty good player. Zinkin's a really good player. Nuka's a really good player. Gubiak, you know, he's trash, but we let him in. <laughs> it's, it's just because he's Gubiak. Yeah, yeah. No, Gubiak slash Gubiak games. Gubiak has some fucking great moments. Sometimes, you know, he gets tilted, admittedly. He's, he's one of the most tilted players I know when he gets mad. But he's a pretty good fucking... He's a pretty good player. Um, just to put it out... This is very good from you. Like, you checked out if they wouldn't push. Yeah, uh, yeah, we're slow. waiting. I mean, basically, we were thinking, you know, we're going to smoke at 1.30 or whatever. There's no reason for me to have my smoke until I'm going to do it. Which, by the way, this is probably a bad smoke. I can't remember whether I pulled them I'm off gonna or not. I'm going to shoot you if it's a bad smoke. Yeah, okay. I mean, I, I'm trying I to line it up with the land. right pillar. It's supposed to land on the cross. You know where stairs and jungle are? Oh, There's like that, that cross was there. Smoke. <laughs> did, really? Did, did, did it do it? I'm going to go look at it. Oh my god. Oh, no, it was. It was very bad. It was very bad. You see, I need to relearn that one. I was thinking about that last night. I actually learned all the smokes except that one, and then I found it, like, on a random video, and I've just been trying to, like, teach myself it in the middle of competitives. That doesn't work. I need to go actually fucking practice it in a private server, which I have access to, so there's no excuse. So since there's no excuse, I'm going to show you how to do that smoke that we're talking about right now. It's the one for the cross at the stairs. So you want to come up here, and you want to go to the second window, not the first one, second one, and get in the middle of it, about the middle of it. To check, you can look at this crack right there in between this, like, stone. Get along that crack. Now you're in the middle. You want to aim on this, like, line here, 
just a little bit above that between these two pillars at the top um, just a little bit lower than them and then you just throw a little bit specific but I tried to show you the best I could replay this if while muted if you want and that's it that's how you do it it's perfectly fine I now know how to do it after doing that video and uh, there it is right. Jenna, are you uh, ready for the sickest clutch of your life he goes for the flash it bounces and I die I die. It's, it's, it's not working. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so here you try out a B push. Yeah, go for the flash. Let's see how it works out. Oh, you get spotted. Made it. You get an easy kill. Yeah, it was okay. a good headshot. Yeah, Pretty good. Kill. And then I die. And you get shot from. But you basically did your job. Yeah, I was trying to entry frag. This is basically when you friends, like Sinken, should have helped. Should have been pushed Maybe, yeah. Well. They should have been walking through while I was doing the damage. Position-wise, Zinken isn't really in the best of positions no. here because, as you see, he got shot from short. And also, apartments could shoot him as well. He could have taken a safer position um, from most of the spots that he could use there. He could have already jumped out of window through the smoke. Could have already been on site. Uh, he could have already been pushing at bench. He could have pushed uh, apartments. He could have pushed short. There's yeah. just too many angles. He wasn't safe there. Well, there was three places where they could come from overall, like market short and apartments, and he was watching one half of one from that position. So yeah, I agree. But I mean, there's a lot of places that you could push, and you just listed them. So, But don't worry. I've got a deagle. I'm so ready. Don't worry. I'm going to absolutely dominate this round. It's going to be amazing. They call me They call me uh, Juan. Quandy. Yeah, you see that? You see that? Oh, oh wow. Oh, oh, wow. That's right. Well, Ladies and gentlemen, take notes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I basically don't have anything to teach you anymore. That's yeah. it. <laughs> That's it. We're, We're done, done here. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. No, it was pretty bad. I thought I hit him um, the first two times, you know, when I peeked out. Yeah, it yeah. was the first shot, second shot, and I was like, okay, here we go. I'm going to finish him. I peek out, land the shot, and I'm like, why didn't he die? And I just die. And it's Obviously, because I missed uh, the second shot, which I thought I'd hit. So in this situation, we're like, okay, we've taken out two. We know there's two. I think there's one around window. And um, I think Zinkin told me there's another one somewhere on A site, which gave me the information that there's probably two on A. So I was like, let's rotate. And we did. I like your corner yeah. checking here. Only yeah, you like that. There could still be a guy underneath you. Yeah, there. I tried uh, to check everywhere. There could everywhere. still be a guy at bench. Yeah. Um, they could have easily pushed you out of kitchen. Um, it's dangerous, but it's like the best move. Um, you knew that there was still one guy on an A, so it's very easy to Who's push it? out. Flashing, then peeking, getting down. That was very dangerous because if you jump yeah. up, you could, you could as, die. As soon as I jumped on that barrel, I was like, this is bad and went back down. Um, you got quite lucky there because yeah. now there's a guy peeking. I probably there. should have just jumped. I probably should have just jumped, not gone for the barrel. After the flash, just jump, have a look, and then use that. Ouch. Yeah, that hurt me in my soul. <laughs> Come on, Zinken. Save me. You could do it. You could do it, Zinken. Save us. Oh. You're the chosen Wait, one. Oh, you won it. You did it. Well played. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> well played. Fine. We're, we were all saying, Zinken, you've got it. Leave. And he was like, no. <laughs> this is my time to shine. So right now, I'm actually having a bad game score-wise. I'm like, three kills, four assists, nine deaths. But I have had some good moments, like with the entry fragging in it. At the very least, I'm, I'm doing my part, but my score isn't good enough. So uh, that was that was a bit annoying to me at the time. Well, what people need to realize is score isn't everything. It isn't, no. Um, oh, God. <laughs> yeah, you can't do anything about that. Like, if they push you as, as four. Yeah. Or, or three, even. No, that was a four push. You, I mean, you basically are bound to die unless you have a six spray in which you get the two people, like with your first three bullets, then you're golden. Yeah. You can still spray. In that or if you have backup from a teammate there. In that but, situation, I was thinking, well, we're going to smoke at a certain time. I'll just get my gun out and wait. And then they just push through. And I did actually manage to get two of them. So I was happy about that. As long as I got more than just one in that situation, at least on my job. And because they rushed us and I managed to get the kills and they backed up, we weren't like completely surprised. What you could have done differently there is just stayed behind the wall. Like, you know, if you have a certain time to smoke. There's no reason know. to go far out. Yeah. You, um, so basically, if you kill one or even two, you could just fall back, reset your aim, reset your mindset and then go for it. Yeah. Okay. Now, in this situation, you're trying to back up the offer, which is really good. Uh, they get a pick on middle. You, they know that there's 
two people short, there's one people at mid. Um, so now you're just going to push in. Uh, there's a guy in Ninja, which is Yeah, that was bad. And you get knifed. That was even worse. You get knifed. That was even worse. You were watching the guy on site. You had the best shot on him. Um, so basically the guy behind you should have known that you would have gotten the kill actually trusted you that you should have gotten the kill yeah and he should have peeked like either stairs or left to stairs yeah basically prevent it from well them dropping on my head and knifing me is the uh way i would say it that was yeah, pretty grim. basically not getting wrecked by okay I i'm gonna have to stop you on the uh thought there because let me tell you i just picked up a deagle it's about to go down oh god it's about to go down oh, oh. the best shot anyone's ever seen so and that's quick. it that's it oh you know oh, that's that, all that's i've got it. for you yeah, that was that's, it. All I've, that's all i've got for you oh yeah well it was a nice shot yeah oh, did you oh, like the oh, shot but job. actually but actually oh. but actually it's, it's not yet. <laughs> <laughs> i mean i got free well it's a really good eco run for you guys yeah like, we did some got, damage got three guns of them uh it's a shame they could still save the op yeah you basically did your job, Paulo. I know, you I picked up good. a deagle and got three kills on an eco. It felt amazing. And you get the plan dog. The last guy's on, what is that? One health. You know he's connector. Yep, so I know he's you hurt. Just slowly peek I him. I'm trying to That's peek really out nice. my shoulder so he uh, shows himself. And you go for it and you get an easy kill. Yep. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. That's what happens when you know where the enemy is. I'm actually um, noticing a lot more recently in my recent games. I'm like a lot more calm, or at least I have been. I've definitely still got a lot to learn and still got to improve, but I've been finding myself more calm in reaction to seeing an enemy. You know, I'm not like panic spraying and shit like that. I take a moment and then I aim and then I take the shot. Um, and I'm really happy about that. Like in that situation, I knew he was connector and I have been known to just go, okay, just rush him because I know where he is rather than wait out the right moment. Basically, what I wanted to teach you is you don't have to panic in any kind of situation. Just think, analyze, and always try to make 1v1. Yeah. The game is about information more than other things. Because if you have two people with the same amount of skill, like the same amount of aim, the, the guy with the most information normally will win. Yeah, that's a good point. You 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 want if you know where he is exactly and he knows your general area, you have the advantage. Basically, you know that there's a guy at stairs here. You easily kill him, putting yourself very open. To the really? Next yeah! Time. Wow, that was close. The guy missed. <laughs> I the I shot walked out so far and he fucking missed, and then the smoke went down. That was like insanely close for me. And then nade um, window or jungle area where I knew he was. And I take a position in sandwich. I say um, Zinc and I'm watching site. And actually we find out he's in C2. And there we go. That's all of the T-Rods done. Yep. Well, basically, it's it's kind of a good game you're having. I'm going yeah. to be honest. Um, everyone's them, doing good. Brought them important points back. What I see here that's very interesting is you buy... There's two people on your team who buy diffuse kits. Yeah, there was uh, a weird conversation we had when that happened. But um, most of the time, the CTs only buy one defuse kit, um, and two people buy like nades and stuff like that. So they get a little bit of utility, and two people buy yeah. armor, or even three people buy armor. Doesn't really matter as long as you have some nades to keep them off. And because most of the time, first rounds are always rushes. Uh, the most Nice round, by the way. The yeah. most common rushes, like 70% of the time, if you play Mirage, the first round is going to be a B apartment rush. Just yeah, because it's usually. so difficult to stop. To be fair, you're, you're right. Like It's usually what we do. If I think about it, when I'm with a five stack or when I've got a team who will listen, we just go B the first round. Because you just walk through. The, the chance of them having a grenade to stop you is low. But if you're fast, even if they throw it, you just run past it. Um, yeah, that, and then that's you just mow the guy down at the car. 70% of the time it's just a B rush. Um, there's nothing you can do about this. Whoa. It's nice to get a Nico around quickly over. As a CT, it's it's a difficult decision between pushing or just staying behind. Yeah. Because if you I mean, push, you should probably push as four people or five people or three people. Just yeah. so you have the bodies. You've got the advantage. Uh, You'll get the one kill. Um, the one kill at least. Yeah. Then, 
if you're CT, there's also the other possibility to just hang back, let the terrorist push in, let them use everything, so you can easily surprise them around an angle or something like that. Maybe even try and put up a crossfire on a site, so yeah, you can easily get a kill. That that's like the thing you have to do. What you did here was just push uh, palace. It could have gone well if the other guy didn't have that good of a spawn. If you actually used the quicker way to get into palace, you the might parkour have... way. You mean? Yeah, the parkour yeah, way. Yeah, I need to learn that. <laughs> uh, you might have gotten there quicker, you might not have gotten the one shot on your face, and you might have gotten a kill, but yeah. there's a lot of mites in this second. Well, so. the reason I decided to push up like that and go palace, which is something I hadn't done this entire game, is because I had a CZ. Um, I find that CZs are ridiculous at close range. If you have, like, someone at, like, I don't know, a meter or two away from you and you've got a CZ, even if you've got no armor, as long as you get the first shot or whatever, you just at least start firing before you die you can just mow them down and then steal their gun, which is what I was trying to do because no one had rushed past the entire game. I was hoping that they wouldn't be cautious because of that, so I just went through, um, hoping to just quickly get a kill and get a gun, and it just didn't work. Sneaky. Yep. Sneaky! Yep. <laughs> yep. So in this situation, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go when they're fighting him, and then I go out and they're not fighting him. Because I heard him shoot, and I went, and then they backed up. It was a uh, very unfortunate timing there. Well, it was still a very good eco run. Like, yeah, we did damage. They, they, they lost three guns. Uh, like, they rebought an op in this round as well. Here you take another very dangerous position. Yeah. You went up the stairs. You could still be someone in Palace. You get a nice kill the guy there. Yeah, it was, a, it was an alright spray. I, I'd say my weakness as a player is my spray control, for sure. Um, to aim. You see me like there when I got that kill in underpass. It's tap firing. I do a lot of tap firing at medium to long range rather than like trying to control a spray. If I was able to control a spray, I'd get more bullets out. I'd do more damage. But I know I can't, so I tap fire and I end up being more successful for that reason. But it means I'm not trying to improve on my spray in game. Um, I don't know whether that's good or bad, really. In that situation, it's not really important. The most important thing is that you just get the kill. It doesn't matter in what fashion you get the kill. Yeah. You just have to get the kill. Okay. If you're sprayed, you might not have gotten the kill. Probably not with my spray, yeah. I, I believe that in that situation, the best chance I had at getting a kill was to tap him. and I mean, it worked. What you did here was Extremely very risky. surprising yeah. that you actually wanted out. What you did there, the flesh, flesh your teammate on A. If they uh, would have pushed out, it would have been bad. Yeah. What you could have done as well is like just turn around, throw the flesh against the wall, so it would come on side as well. Yeah, 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 exactly that. Um, put my back to where the stairs are and bounce it off the wall, rather than doing it like a diagonal. Just do it straight forward and yeah. run against the wall. Yeah, something I I would I've been trying to think about. Like it happened earlier in this game, like when when I was on T side trying to push into the CT and it was one v two and I was trying to work out what's the best flash in this situation. Um, honestly, I'm gl I'm glad that I even just consider that in those moments, but I still need to actually learn, you know, what is the best flash. Um, and a big part of that, like I've been saying, is keeping calm in those situations. And then you when you when you're calm, when you're not stressing out, you can work those things out better. I still remember. When I first met you and first told you about the game, what should have gone different, one of the first advices I gave you was be patient. Yeah. Yeah. Think I about it. Think about what you're doing. Come on, come on, because come on. every single thing you do can have its consequence. And if you're not thinking straight, every decision you make might go worse for you than yeah, for it could be a bad enemy. one. If you're nervous as well, it makes you do worse way decision making, worse yeah. decisions. What you're doing here is the guy in the middle got killed, so you need to hold connector. You're in a little bit of a dangerous situation here. That was a really bad smoke by the terrorist, which makes it easy for you to peek. Um, now they know where you are. Um, it's very I dangerous. I shot my teammate. That was so bad. <laughs> I shot at him. <laughs> This is just bad. I'm fully blind now. <laughs> and then I'm like, well, okay, I can see it dead. Yeah. That was bad. It was just sort of this awkward moment where I was like, oh, they're, they're coming down, connect, coming through in front of me. They did a bad smoke. I'm going to ream them for it. And they panicked and shot my teammate because he popped up. And I readjusted, took a shot at another enemy, and then my teammate killed him. And then I was blind. 
and it was just it was bad. I don't know. Maybe there was a better position for me to be in, um, and maybe I should have, like we were just saying, been a bit more patient with uh, what I was looking at. Like in that situation, I had a really good chance to just absolutely dominate them by shooting them in the back. Um, and I knew that, and in that moment, I was like, gotta kill the first guy. And I don't have to kill the first guy. I know my teammate was holding short, um, and I know that I'll be able to shoot them in the back as they cross, so I should have at least waited. Well, you got the first kill. Most of the time, if you get one kill, you have done your job in a round. What was special about that situation is, you were still alive, you, had still so, you still had so much health. If he would have fallen back a little bit, um, yeah. And just stayed alive in that situation, uh, not Grenade. taking it that quickly. You you could have done more for your team there. Yeah, maybe. I mean, um, when I got blinded, I knew that I could back up and go left, and either I'll get out of the connector or I'll go into that corner behind the box. Um, and I believe in at the time I was thinking I want to be behind that box, so if they push me through connector. Uh, I'll be able to just shoot them with uh, some cover. But in reality, I, I knew they were walking down catwalk. I knew they were going down short. And I knew the smoke wasn't protecting them from me. And therefore, you know, me from them. So, really, in that situation, while I was blind, I should have walked out the connector. Um, but I couldn't tell you whether I knew how to do that when I was blind. Because I was just yes. doing it by feel. This is uh, eco round. We decided, you know, let's just do it. Let's just go through. Somehow See? I don't die there. And it's nice. Oh. And then everyone's trying to yeah. push through now and he backs up, which was the bad part. So it's just me now and uh, Gubiak. Managed to get the kill. We get a gun. I'm worried they're going to push me. I'm really sad I didn't get that author on stairs. I turned around and went for the tap fire. And in that situation, I, I normally would. Um, but they know I'm there, they know I'm in main, they know I could go palace, so I decide, let's do a long rotate, let's su let's surprise them. I get surprised. Oh, sad. <laughs> I so get sad. surprised. And I'm like, alright, okay, fine, one down, and then a second one. It's like, so bullshit. God, I was upset. I was really upset there. Uh, yeah, it happens. Uh, yeah. What you, what you should have done there is never run with your knife out. Yeah, exactly. I, running around T-spawn where I know they can't physically get to me, because i just seen two of them and I know one of them was planting. Um, you know, I could have run with my knife up until the corner of T-spawn, but from that point on, they could have been there. I should have had my gun out. Little things like that. Map awareness, really. So it's 14-14. It's a critical round. Um, the T's bought because they don't want to lose. If you take a look at the economy, you yeah, guys can't lose this round either because you no. don't have any money left. Um, we get one these kill. Get the frags. And it's now a 2v4 situation. I know there's a Gubiak guy there. with a double nade. Yeah. That was <laughs> so ridiculous. I didn't even know that happened at the time. He got a two-man nade. I didn't even know he did that. So it's all down to Nuka now. It's this really scary situation. He picks up an AK, so he's got like a good close-range weapon. And we know that the guy's on sight and he's picked a bomb. And then... What was good about his... What's good about what he did is he heard him on sight. He knew he still had to plant the bomb, so what he did is he waited. He waited until he planted to actually uh, pop out so he could have an advantage on him. A technique mostly used for fake planting is just tapping it and then switching to your gun. But he had no idea that Nuka was, was in even palace, in Palace, so. yeah. So it was lo it was logical that he wasn't gonna fake. Um, it was logical. He might have still faked. I don't know. Yeah, he that. could have done. Yeah, I mean. Um, done but it, he but... wouldn't have watched Palace because no. the chance of Nuka being CT were way higher. Yeah. Than of him being in uh, Palace. So in this final round, I've not even seen any action. There's two dead. Looking See at the there. minimap, we know there's a guy actually on site right now. There's a fight going on. Sinkin ends up winning it, which I'm very happy about. And then from there, it's a 5v2, and I'm, I'm like, sweating bullets at this point. It's a really close game. And then it's 5v2, and I'm just so fucking relieved. So I, I remember saying down Mike, I see my teammates push on the minimap. I was like, just stop it. Just hold your positions. We were 5v2. Just hold your positions. And then someone doesn't listen to me anyway and pushes T-spawn, but whatever. Um, in that situation, 
holding your positions and, you know, just doing your normal thing on a site would have been the better idea than risking it and rushing. But we managed to get the win either way. And uh, what a fucking game it was. That Doza guy, 36 kills, 19 deaths. Pretty much the reason why they were doing so well there. Jesus. Yeah, it's true. Didn't He's notice that. Played it well. Yeah, indeed, you were completely right. When you're pushing, you basically give the enemies an opportunity to catch you off guard. get easy frags. Yeah. So if both of them actually got an easy frag, like pushing, uh, it would it would already be in a three on two. Yeah. Which meant that they had a way bigger chance to win the round than a two v five. Yeah, yeah. Uh, than if they would have pushed somewhere together. Or I mean, something. either way, yeah. if we like, if the five of us just said, okay, it's five v two, and we just held the site as if nothing had happened, the round had just started, they would have to do a two v two, no matter which way they went, and then the guy in the middle would rotate quickly, and it'd be before long a three v two. So we just had absolute advantage there to just hold the site, and I think it was Gubiak that just said, no, I want, I want to push, and also I think someone went up short, catwalk in mid. Um, I don't know. I was saying that on voice and they stayed for a little bit, but I don't know. I, I guess we still have some patience to learn when it comes to kills and wanting kills. But uh, it was a good game. I enjoyed it. But yeah, I'll try and see what I can do with the editing in this video. Um, there's a lot of like tips and things that you've said, you know, and I want to like show visuals of it if possible. Uh, I'm going to try and learn those smokes that I was talking about and then hopefully show them in the video in a way that, you know, is easy to understand and easy to learn. And I hope you guys like this video. A bit different, something we've never done before. It's also Venno, you know, Venno is not really a guy who's done lots of commentary on stuff, I guess. So, um, yeah, I think you did a good job. It was fun. Um, and hopefully you guys learned something. Uh, I had a good time. Yeah, and I'm glad that I got to show that game in the end as well. There'll be more uh, Counter-Strike live commentaries in the future, but if this is something you guys really, really liked, do let me know. Do let me know. All right, thanks for joining me, Venno. We'll uh, we'll see you next time. Just just, just one more tip for, yeah. for future reference. Don't ever delete your footage again. Okay, you know what? Good tip. <laughs> God damn see it. Ya. Bye. Hey guys, quick little t bonus tip here. This is the stair smoke. You want to just hop on this ledge, aim just about here in between this sort of like uh, wall and pillar. It's very easy to do. Uh, you can just replay that until you do it. Try it out in your own game. It's super important to block the AWPA in jungle or on stairs. And then another one is the CT smoke. So now I've shown you in this video every single smoke for CT, for uh, stairs and the connection, which is jungle. Um, basically, you just walk up to that crack, that specific crack, aim at that, pillar pole thing down and to the right a tiny bit and then you do running throw so run and then let go like as soon as you start moving and it'll land right there here's a little warning though they can actually jump on the uh the box if they're so inclined and shoot over it but they are you know visible at that point but just a little warning but there you go guys